inspired me to start my own line yeah? on Amazon. Yeah, I remember you'd always be asking and... Uh, That's how Barber Up was started. Really? Yeah, you're a part of the inspiration. That's awesome. See, ev everyone I come in contact with eventually has a piece of Amazon. Yeah, right? It's nice. Hey, what's going on? We're here at my barber shop today. Dennis, he's the man with the master plan. He's also an Amazon seller. So we're just gonna be shooting the talking all things Amazon, learning more about what I do, more about what he does, and uh, getting a trim at the same time. Amazon. And it's what we do every time I'm here anyways, That's so right. it's, it's absolutely no different. That's true. When did you start now? Five years ago? Uh, I started selling in February 2013. Huh. 2013 I started. Seemed like yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, I was coming here, right? I was coming I here. I remember yeah. when, um, when you were selling in your house, right? In the basement? I was selling in the basement. Maybe, yeah. So when I first started selling some products, I couldn't afford you. I couldn't afford to come here. But, but once the product started moving, I was like, you know what? Let me go see this guy. He looks like he's got the classic barbershop. I always see people packed in there, so. You inspired me to start my own line. Yeah? On Amazon. Yeah, I remember you'd always be asking and. Uh, That's how Barber Up was started. Really? Yeah, you're a part of the inspiration. That's awesome. See, ev everyone I come in contact with eventually has a piece of Amazon. Yeah, right? It's nice. There's, you know, there's a lot of opportunity, and there was a lot of opportunity back then. I'm happy I got it. It was scalable. It was scalable for it, you. It still is. I mean, so, okay, it's more saturated now, but there's also a lot more tools available now. Right. You know? More than ever. More than ever. Like, I remember when I was flipping products out of the basement, I would be going to Costco and I'd right. literally go with a notebook and a pen and I'd write down the UPC, the item number, the price, maybe a description of the product as well. Mm -hmm. And then I, I, I'd spend two, three hours in there and go home and search them all up on a laptop because right. this is before the Amazon seller app. Right. You know, this is before you could just scan products. So yeah. then I'd find the profitable ones and I'd quickly go back and purchase as much as possible. So. Long days, a lot of long days, and a lot's changed since then. But uh, so you were you you started out selling food, I remember. Right? I, you know what? It was really just big box, like the club store products. Oh. Later on, we saw there was an opportunity in food, organic right. food, health foods. So we kind of moved that way, and it was about 70-30 with 70% being food. Right. And now it's just a really diverse. What was your first hire? My first hire yeah, was. When you a, needed that first employee. What was it? What was the role? A guy, a guy that I knew, Vinny D. Vinny D. Vinny D. Uh, he passed away a couple years ago. But uh, yeah, I remember I was in a 1,000 square foot warehouse. I remember that one. And I needed more time to source products to get online. This is when I already had my first wholesale account, maybe two at this point. And I needed more time to uh, source. So I was like, I need to bring somebody into the warehouse. And I remember that first week he came, we had maybe a couple cases of Kirkland fish oil, a couple uh, boxes of mac and cheese to go mm -hmm. cups. I mean, literally you could fit it on one pallet. Right. And you know, it's a thousand square foot warehouse. So you could probably fit about 30 pallets in there. 30 pallets. I was like, how are we ever going to fill this place up? I gave him a composition notebook and he laid out boxes flat on the ground. He organized what was already pretty much organized just to keep himself busy. Wow. And he kind of wrote down our, our inventory stock. He did, you know, he did a uh, quick check so on that was our first inventory. hire. That was our first hire. He later on became a warehouse worker slash driver. My second employee is still with us today. He runs our warehouse. Who is that? Greg. Greg, okay. Yeah. I saw him today. Yeah, you saw him today. Yeah, he, I tell people it's not my warehouse, it's Greg's. <laughs> it's true. He runs it. So when you launch a product, yeah. um, how long do you run your pay-per-click campaigns? Okay, so first we go really aggressive. We go, we do an automated with a manual, really aggressive manual based on the keywords that we already looked up beforehand, based on the category of the product itself. Uh, also product targeting based on the ASIN. So we're already doing that, but then we might have missed some. 
So that's why we're doing the automatic campaign. And we know, like, ultimately, if you want a product to do really well, you need to spend, you know, five to ten thousand dollars in the first wow. 30 to 45 days. Really? It depends how fast you want to scale up, right? right? Like that one brand I was telling you about, I had it ranked 10,000 in health and household within 20 days. That was a combination of using uh, promotions outside of Amazon, of using promotions inside of Amazon, of using social media, of using coupons and going very heavy on PPC campaigns. How long will you run an automatic campaign with a manager? So automatic campaign, I probably run for anywhere from two to four weeks. And it really just depends on how well my manual is doing. If my manual is converting really well and I have a, the ACOS where I want it to be, right. you know, I'll just continue just to tweak the manual one, trying to lower my ACOS without affecting my conversions. And how are you tweaking? With what? Well, I'm, I'm looking at the different keywords, the targeted keywords. I'm seeing which ones aren't converting or which ones we're just spending money, we're spending clicks on and, and they're not converting. So I might remove those. Uh, ones that aren't converting as well, I might mess around with the bidding. And then I might also optimize. And then the ones that are doing really well, I'll filter it because I'll start in broad, then I'll go to phrase, and then I'll go to exact so I can lower my costs. So if you were giving advice yeah. to a new Amazon seller right now, mm -hmm. what, would, what would you recommend their first hire to be? Uh, someone to do the manual stuff. For example? Uh, whether it's uh, stickering the products, labeling. Listen, you know, I don't know what you're going to pay the person, but let's say you're paying them $15 an hour, right? Cash. If you can source $30 an hour cash, Meaning you find, you know, you find three aces that are making you ten dollars, and you buy one unit of them each. Right. Uh, you've already made money, and you're learning. So that's the thing. Like people, people, a lot of people I talk to, they go, "Oh yeah, I'm losing money on this product." I, you know, I'm just like, "How much did you spend on college? How much did you spend? Right. How much? How much money were you making at your nine to five when you were really possibly not learning anything, but just exactly. doing the same job over and over again?" Like right. here's an opportunity to learn, invest in yourself, and maybe break even, maybe lose a, a couple shekels, but like at the end of the day, you're learning. At the end of the day, it's a skill. Right. Like everything, everything I'm talking, everything skill. I'm talking to you about right now is just from experience. Right. From a lot of what people would call mistakes, I rather call learning experience. Absolutely. Your, what is like your mix of categories at this point? Like you're selling less food now. Yeah. So are you focusing more on private label? Are you focusing more on... We're definitely focusing more on private label. We're also focusing more on working with brands directly because we're so much more than just a seller. You know, we've built systems, automated a lot of processes, have a lot of analytics behind us so we could provide a lot of value to brands. Uh -huh. And then the other aspect of it is uh, we've just diversified our entire portfolio as far as the wholesale aspect of it. We can, I mean, we, we sell ice cubes. We sell automatic chicken coop door openers. We wow. sell, you know, sneakers. So how do you recommend acquiring new um, suppliers? I think well, you need to do more than just talk to them. I think you need to analyze their product on Amazon and then analyze their competitors. And that's what a lot of people don't do. They, suppliers? Uh, yeah, yeah, the, the suppliers as far as, well, I'm talking about brands, like picking up brands and going directly to the brands. Right. But also a lot of our suppliers, that's the way we pick them up, right? So let's say we're looking up a tool supplier. Right. We'll go look up its competitor and we'll be say, hey, you know, we just got a catalog from so-and-so, but theirs isn't as extensive as yours, you know, kind of right. boast them up a little bit. Uh, you know, we like to go forth and open an account. Uh, can you send us over, over the information for opening account? Or if there's someone there we could speak to now. If there's someone there we could speak to now, we'll talk about the different opportunities and we'll talk about how their competitors working with some Amazon sellers right now to, to kind of move volume. And, you know, it works. I might be the first human to ever get their first shave live or video. Maybe. What do you mean? I mean, I wonder if there's another human being who ever got their first shave recorded for them. Oh, really? I'm, I'm, I'm just, sure there is. Right? Yeah. But like cell phone recorded, not DS. Can we talk to Why you try to become the shave king of Montclair? Yeah. 
Oh, is that alright? Mm -hmm. You're good? Yeah. What are you gonna do now? What's the plan this? To soothe your, uh, soften your beard. Really? To make the shave more pleasurable. You follow? Yeah, so do I have to start doing this at home now? You should. Is this what you do? Yeah, man. You really walk around like this? Kids will like it. So what do you recommend um, at trade shows? You go to trade shows a lot, right? Yeah. Supplies, new suppliers? I recommend going to every trade show possible. But at first, you pick an industry and go with it. But Amazon, like, you don't need to stick with one industry. But you just learn about it, and then you move on to the next one and continue. The more time you spend around people... Can I still talk? I'm getting, I'm getting yeah. kind of nervous. You can talk very little. Okay. Just don't do any sudden reactions, you know? No, I don't. I don't know how to... You nervous? A little bit. Good. I'm just, I'm just wondering if I've said anything wrong to you in the past <laughs> six weeks. <laughs> you should do this as a ritual before you go to Vegas. Yeah. The trade shows. Yeah, well, I'll be at the next this one. This will put you on your game. Are you going to the next one? You were talking I'm about I'm going it. to Vegas. That's awesome. Great. Great. I'll see you there. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, when you, when you meet a new supplier, what kind of questions do you ask? What do you want to know from them? Well, I'm gonna, uh, before I even meet them, I'm going to do my own analytics and I'm going to provide them with free information as far as their Amazon account. So you um, want to meet? Yeah, and, and, and even those that I, that I don't know, I, I'll ask them questions about how it's being handled. Is it just a seller or is it an agency? Mm -hmm. You know, growing a business and growing a relationship. Especially with your suppliers. Right? Mm -hmm. Growing a relationship with your supplier. Exactly. Exactly. Taking care of them. One hand feeds the other. If somebody wanted to buy your course on how to shave properly? Absolutely. You're going to offer that? Mm -hmm. Nice. Barberup.com. All right. That's a clean cut, Dennis. That's a clean cut. How long was that growth? A week? Yeah. I mean, I was here about a week ago. I think at 35, I'm finally able to start growing facial hair. Yeah? Yeah. It's kicking in. Or how about taking an item from a category and moving it to another category because you think it'll have a better fit? Yeah, is it your own brand or another brand? Your own brand. It, 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 it's going to affect its BSR, its best sellers rank. So what would happen? Well, what's going to happen is that, you know, but I, I've done that. so. When I works? when I originally well one of the products I was selling was in, originally an industrial and scientific right, and I did that because it has a twelve percent referral fee versus health and household fifteen percent or you know home kitchen whatever and I noticed the conversion wasn't as well as I wanted so I tweaked it around I messed with keywords everything it still wasn't quite where I wanted I switched the category to health and household and now the product moves a lot better. And it was because I saw a lot of my competitors that had a product similar were in that category. So I was like, you know, I originally put in Industrial Scientific, and this is the first brand I, I released just about four years ago. I put in Industrial Scientific thinking I was slick saving money, and really it was just hurting hmm. my conversion. Ooh. We're putting the final touch. The final touch. First impression is everything when you're meeting with that, uh, supplier or brand and don't forget it's about what you don't say that's what they're looking at first big friendly smile 